Hey, what's up? I'm Michael. In this video, I'm actually going to be doing an underpainting and then coloring over it. Uh, the underpainting is tonal or value, and it's just like a grayscale, and then you just paint over it. Uh, at this point, I'm just setting up my layers and picking the colors, setting my brushes up. Um, and at this point, I'm just laying in the base color, which is neutral gray 3. Uh, later on, you'll see that when I'm done, I, the color all of a sudden intensifies. And what I've done is I actually duplicate the layer to get the final effect of the color that I, that I got uh, in this program. This is Sketchbook Pro 6. Uh, at this point, I'm just erasing around the ears, or the ears and the outline to make sure I've not got anything out of the, the lines. And... I will try to keep up with what's going on. I may get behind just a little bit. I may start talking about something kind of in and out of it just all of a sudden. At that point, I was trying to select, uh, but there is no magic wand selection in this program, so I didn't do it. That'll help you to stay in the lines uh, when you're doing this. Uh, right now, I'm actually, I went in and I put the gray zero as the the lowest color which is going to be the whites of the eyes and teeth and now i'm adding in the layers of the shadows or the shading and then i'll go back in and actually add some highlights in and at this point i've cut off the the line art to show that it actually is more like a like a model type thing or a render at that point um it's more like a regular painting and you can actually take that line art off and continue from there and i may show that in another video uh i think it actually looks really good with that without the line art as well or with the line art at about 30 percent capacity uh, also right there I'm not sure if I've done it right there, but later on you'll see I cut the color back off. And when I do, what I'm doing is using the blend brush to actually smooth out some of the transitions of the um, tones. Uh, right there also you've seen I, I put in eyebrows and I used a darker gray. And what I've done that for is if you want to simulate hair, um, eyebrows or just hair on the head or whatever you can go in and you paint a base color which is your skin and then you go back in with a darker color and you go over that darker color uh, again with a darker color than that one and then you go back in with two light colors and bring out highlights and stuff and it gives it a much more realistic of a effect uh, for hair um, without having to draw hair and the way most other people do it i believe um and at this point i'm actually adding in detail to the eyes uh, that's what i like drawing about or drawing this way for is that you can add the detail you want really uh in doing cell shading you don't really get to add as much detail and i love adding the detail in the the tonal drawings and the, the value paintings uh, I like making wild looking eyes and that's why I put the, the irises or the um I guess they're called the irises around like that. And at this point I'm just going in and shading the mouth. Or rendering the mouth, I guess is what you would call it. Now, later on you will see me start the hair and I'll I'll do it exactly the way I talked about uh, I'm just setting up my brushes for it right now I believe yeah um so you can see I'm actually doing individual strokes to give it the effect of there being something there that's not solid uh, something that's fluffy which your hair and his hair is 
supposed to be fluffy. By the way, this character is uh, sort of like a slow... He's sort of slower than most people. He's a brute type character. And think of um, the brutes in Batman who are really slow in the head. I, I, I'm not making fun of anybody or anything at all. It's just that's the kind of character I was going for. That's what's up with his his eyes and his expression on his face. Uh, you can see I'm adding in layers, darker layer over top of that first layer, and then I went back with an even darker layer, and now I'm adding in lighter layers at there at the top. In a minute, and I'm going back and fixing the eyebrows here, and in a minute when I start adding color, when I get to the hair, you'll notice when I'm done erasing around it, I go back and I start pulling color, the hair color, down into the scalp right here um, above where the hair, or right below where the hairline actually is in the drawing. And if you notice, it's really washed out looking. I went through all of the layers to see what the the best type of um, layer would be for that, the best layer effect. And uh, using multiply is the best thing to do in this program for coloring over stuff. This is where I'm using the blend brush. Uh, and then I go back for the color, complete the color. And as I was saying, though, with the um, the hair, I pull from the hairline down into the top of the skin where you're supposed to be able to see it and all. And that gives the, it gives like a, a softening effect. And it, it sort of looks like there's actually hair right there that's, growing out of that part and it, it makes it look more realistic and transition better and by the way these are the exact same colors that i used for the cell shading um version of this and now whatever you do when you do this uh on your computer or your tablet it may look exactly the same as it does on another one or it may look completely different this one, when I was done with it, it looked excellent. Uh, and in the other one, it looks really washed out on my my actual desktop. At that point, I was actually pulling out highlights with a soft eraser. Uh, if you want to make highlights in the eyes and stuff, that's what I would suggest and would suggest doing is using the soft eraser to pull those back out. And this is about the end of the video here. You can see I'm erasing around where there's actually no um, value under it. And that's where I put those hairs in and duplicate the layer. That's it.